Greetings friends, my name is Mickey Kelly. I am the president of the St. Raymond Anathis Foundation and an active member of the Knights of Columbus. My topic today is the Eucharist helping those in spiritual dryness. So, the Eucharist. If we look at some of the examples of the saints, they had one thing in common. They drew strength from the Blessed Sacrament. Think about the times that we have forgotten to watch one hour with the Lord. 11 out of 12 disciples forgot to do that. But one stood, stayed with Jesus for most of his, for most of his journey to Calvary. And that was St. John. He even got a front row seat to when The beloved, as he was referred to, beheld his mother, Mary, as the mother of the church. But what's more important is the fact that we, when we look at the cross, we don't just see Jesus like this. We see something more. That is his body and blood that is given to us freely. That's when he instituted the Eucharist the night before. And let's face it. There will be times we are going to need it more. Now, as we look at an alarm statistic that came out very recent, that 7 out of 10 Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. We have a problem on our hands, and we're going to have our work cut out for it. Now, we look at the history of the Catholic Church, especially through the lives of the saints. Many of them have one thing in common, and that is their love for the Eucharist. Many of times, these great holy men and women, they will spend hours a week before the Blessed Sacrament because they knew that they were going to draw the, the strength that they need to overcome all the adversities in our lives. John Tolkien, known for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, puts it well when he wrote to his son, Christopher, Out of the darkness of my life, so much frustrated, I put before you the one great thing in, to love on earth, the Blessed Sacrament. There, you will find romance, glory, honor, fidelity, and the true way of all your loves upon earth. Let's break down this quote by the great English writer. There's so much darkness in our lives. It can be a little frustrating. It can be a little discouraging. But I can assure you that Christ is the light. He's the light of salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And he'll shine in the darkness regardless. I remember an example. A priest once told me that one time he was recovered. He was not fully recovered from a hand injury he sustained. And as he was elevating the chalice, it dropped. And there was a crack in it. Thankfully, it was able to be replaced. My friends, Jesus is the one that saves us. He is the light that cracks through the darkness in our lives.
He is our light. We long for food, the spiritual food that's given to us freely in the Eucharist. And let's face it, as Fulton Sheen reminds us, the greatest love story can be found in the tiny host. And there's a lot of truth to that. Because it is through the body and blood of Jesus that we are saved. To me, I draw strength from the Eucharist because I know it will strengthen my faith journey. Maybe a little intimidating that you're going to sit in an adoration chapel for minutes on end and you're not sure what to do. But I can assure you, take that hour, pray fervently, be with Jesus. Most importantly, let him conquer all of the fears, the darkness, and everything that is weighing you down. Because without that road to Calvary, we wouldn't be here. It is through Jesus' example that he shows us that we don't hunger, well, we do need to eat food, of course, and we do need to drink water. That's very important. We do need to nourish ourselves for sure. But spiritually, how do we nourish ourselves? And many of the saints in the church, they were daily, some of them at some point in their lives, they became daily communicants. Many even frequently went to adoration. Some started out one hour a week and some started going every day because they knew that Jesus was their source of nourishment and strength. It is through the Eucharist that He strengthens us too. He will help you overcome the aches, the doubts, the questions we all have in our lives. One of the stories I really enjoy about Fulton Sheen is that he made a promise when he was ordained a priest that he will commit to an hour a day before the Blessed Sacrament. And boy, did he uphold that. But as he became more famous, he started adding an additional hour of adoration. Now granted, some of us may wonder, what do we do if we put in an extra hour of adoration? I know <laughs> some people just like, well, the only thing I could probably do is just sit there and just not, well, try not to look at my phone. And just, you know, look at Jesus and then kneel for a few, for a few minutes, sit, take out a spiritual reading and read on it, a pounder. Or even just go over the daily readings for the day. And then just sit there and think, okay, what's God trying to tell me? If you want to get the most out of your next holy hour... Bring something spiritually with you. Pray your rosary. Pray a Divine Mercy Chaplet. Even pray with the saints. Your patron saint. Your confirmation saint. A saint of the year you have. As I draw to a close, I do want to offer something to those who are seeing this video. How can I get to adoration more? Simply put, 
find a church that's offering and there's there are some that are doing it on a weekly basis and then you have the ones that have round the clock adoration and then after daily mass they may be open around the clock until like supper time or something so be aware of that if you can't do a full hour do 15 minutes a day for at least a week and then if you're ready add 20 I'm sorry, at 30. Now do the math. Triple it, quadruple. Go for an hour a week. And if, if you're feeling that you need to go there more, go for an additional hour a week. But the main purpose of your holy hour is you want to bring everything to Jesus. You want to bring him to him your worries, your anxieties of the world, Whatever's troubling you. Because remember, he laid down his life for you. He's the sacrifice. He is what we hunger for. We hunger for truth. We hunger for him. Because when we look at that blessed sacrament, we pray before it. There's glory, honor, and faith. And he is the true way that can lead us to our goal in life, and that is heaven. So friends, have you been watching for one hour? Now will be the time to do so. Take that first step and bring everything to him. May Christ's peace be with you. God bless. See you in the Eucharist.